So this is an updated video on how to install the Thompson 4 back paddle kits for the PlayStation 5 controller. Since there's five different generations of PlayStation 5 controllers, I wanted to make this video to kind of show you guys how to identify which generation of the controller you have and which kit belongs to that generation. So I'll show you how to install the kit that works with the first and second generation controller as well as the kit that works with the third, fourth, and the fifth generation. So how do you determine which generation controller you have? Well, let's find out. Here I have four different generation of the controllers, the 010, 020, 030, and 050. Now I don't have a controller for the fourth generation, but I do have this back shell, which we could identify it using the back label. All the controllers look the same from the box and the way to determine which one you have is you have to open it up. My advice is if you're already using the PlayStation 5 controller and you were thinking about installing the Thompson back paddle kits, then you just need to figure out which generation it is and buy that kit. And if you don't have a controller and if you purchase one right now, most likely you're going to get the newer generation controllers, the fourth or the fifth generation. Now that we have our five different generation of controllers laid out here, we're going to be able to identify them pretty much just by looking at the back label. So apart from the 040 and the 050, the rest of these labels are different. The 040 and the 50 are identical, but we'll get back to this in a minute. First, let's distinguish the 010 and the 020. As we can see, the black labels are different. Here on the 020, you have the UKA. Now, if you have this controller here like this with this back label, which is lawn and it doesn't have the UK the UKCA logo, then you know that this is a 010. If you have a similar one like this, but it will have that UKCA logo and it has that garbage bin instead of this little icon, then this is a 020. Now the 030 is the most easiest to identify because as you can see the label is short. It has one, two, three, four, five icons opposed to these other one. I think they have seven icons. The 010, the 020, even the 040 and the 50, they have much longer icons. The difference between the 020 and say the 050, as you can see the logos are different and it's going to have that trash can. Now the 40 and the 50, the labels there are identically the same. I couldn't distinguish them from each other. So well, how are we going to determine that? Well, you have this little QR code on each of the controllers. If you pay attention, there's a QR code on this one and this one and all of them. So what we're going to do with this QR code is if you ever use one, you're going to take your phone let me just make sure you guys see it here. So let's do this one here. And if we zoom in, we get the serial number here. And the second digit is a F2. So let's do that again. So if you guys could see that that digit is a two. So that two after the F means that this is a second generation controller. So if I zoom in on the blue controller, on the QR code with my camera, just let her focus, it's going to show F4 and that 4 means it's a fourth generation controller. So let's try this one here. So this is a G1, it's showing the G1, meaning that this is a first generation controller. And here, this one here with the shortest amount of labels, if we scan that on the phone, it comes out as G3, so this is the third generation controller. So that's just the easiest way that I found to identify which generation controller you have. Now, if your controller is worn out because you've been using it too much, so you cannot see the labels. If your QR code is not scanning, you could actually find the serial number there and you could tell the second digit will show you the controller. I'm not sure if you guys could see it, but this one here, it shows it's F2. So the two is the, says that this is a second generation controller. The only thing is it's very small print. So here I could see that it's a F4. So that means this is the fourth generation controller. Back of the controller, the serial number will actually be printed in very small print. And that second character shows you what generation controller. The only thing is, as you can see on these controllers, it's 
in different areas of the back controller and you don't really know which the serial is you just have to be kind of used to it so it might get scratched out or if you use the controller too much you won't be able to see it If your label is worn out and you can't read it, you could also check the method by checking on the trigger, which I'm going to leave a chart here. And if you know what you're looking for, you could determine which generation controller you have. And the last way to find out is if you open the controller up, if you're planning to do the installation, and once you open it up on the motherboard, it's going to show you which generation of the controller you have. If you check their website or on Amazon, you could see that they have two different versions of the Thompson kits one that is compatible with the 010 and the 020 and another one that's compatible with 030 and the 040 and the 050 as well so once you figure out which generation controller you have you could start with the installation which i'm going to show you in this video so in this video i'm going to be using the 010 first generation controller and i'm also going to be using the fifth generation controller to install the thompson back paddles so you're going to pretty much get the same stuff for both generations just a little bit different so we have your standard cables your back paddle kit your shell and you also get some hardware tools, which they included some tweezers. This is the first time I'm seeing these, but this helps out a lot. And for the first and second generation, you get the similar cables, instruction manual, you get the back case, and the same hardware tools. Before we start, I just want to mention with the Thompson kit, it's probably one of the easiest kits in my experience to install. If you're scared of electronics to open them up, or if you don't want to modify your controllers, I'm pretty sure that if you guys follow this video step to step, you will succeed in this mission. Now, the good thing is they have extremely well put together customer service. So if any of the products or the cables or the motherboard or if any of the, uh, the ribbon cables rip, you could just contact them and they will send you new parts. There's no need to return your product. All you have to do is contact their customer service and let them know that your controller is not working or that some of the parts broke or they ripped, they will actually send you new parts right away. If you run into any issues, most likely it will have to do with the ribbon cables that you might have installed wrong or the motherboard. Check out the after sales customer service and they'll be happy to assist you. So the first part is we're gonna start taking this controller apart by removing these triggers and this will expose uh, one and two screws here and we could also remove this black trim and this will this will expose one two more screws so we could go ahead and start removing these once you remove the four screws there's these little clips that you will unclip right here and now you could slowly open the controller up we could put that back case away and we'll do the same to this one. As we can see from the second generation to the fifth generation, there are some differences in the controller. Like you could tell this trigger mechanism is built different. This one has this white shell here. And what Sony does is they update and change up these controllers due to errors. And I'm pretty sure because of the warranty, like I remember at the first gen, a lot of these, these triggers would snap because this string, uh, spring here wasn't durable so for the second generation they made a much durable thicker spring and as we can see by the time the fifth generation came I think that there's either no spring there or it's kind of it's just a different mechanism as you guys could see here so anyways once we get here what we'll start doing is taking some of this stuff apart so we will remove the battery then we will have to remove this battery case by removing this screw and then we could remove this little tiny speaker or actually this is a microphone now with this generation we could remove the ribbon cable and we won't need these anymore 
Uh, so as you could see here, once we look in this motherboard, you could actually see this is a this is actually a first generation. So it says BDM010. You can do this whole installation without doing any soldering. Now you can solder if you want to map the R3 and the L3 button or the touchpad, but that's optional. I never map my back buttons to the L3, R3 or the touchpad, so I don't do the soldering. But if you do, then you would take this cable here and you would solder it to one of these pins and you would inst install it into the kit. But you don't have to solder to make the four back pad paddles work to map them to any of these buttons or these buttons. So for the first gen, we're gonna look through our baggies here. This is the motherboard. This is for the 020, so we're not gonna need that, but we will need this because this is our 010. So we will take the ribbon cables that's out of this bag and we will also take our main cable here in our motherboard. Now for the third, fourth and the fifth generation, it's a little bit different. We're just gonna take our main cable and our motherboard. And this for the soldering L3, R3, we're not gonna use. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna Take this out here. We're gonna turn this controller, open that up. And we see this two pins here. So <clears throat> we're gonna take this cable here that came with it. And with this sticky pad up, we're just gonna put this on the two holes. Just like that. Now for if any reason that these cables rip or they're not attaching, as I mentioned before, you could contact Thompson and they will send you a replacement. As you can see, those two pins, they come out here. So that's nice and tight. So that's good. Now we're gonna take this cable and we're going to insert it here for the first and second gen. For the third, fourth, and fifth, we actually skip this part. So now we take this cable here and we're just going to insert it just like that. Take this part, twist it, this goes in there. So this is what it should look like. So we're going to do the same thing here and put this ribbon cable inside these pins. One and two. This is a very important part that these pins are nice and tight here because this is the one that makes the connection to this board. Once it's on there, we're just gonna close it back up. We could put this together. Now these ones, you could actually rip them out, you don't need them. but we will put everything else back together. And same with this one. Let's put our microphone back on this and our battery plate case. This is a good time to use these tweezers. Put this in. Put the battery back. And the sticker goes on top of the battery. Now here you have different icons here so since we are not doing the l3 r3 
we're going to avoid this one but we will open these up stick this one here and open this one up the left one stick it this one here I like to do a little extra step and just take some electric tape. I like to just put it right here. Make sure that none of this stuff comes out. And we're almost done with here. Now with this one, it's a little bit easier, I would say, because we don't have to mess with any of those side cables. We just take our battery, put the battery in here. And you have this one part, and that is if you're soldering that one cable to the these buttons and the touchpad. Okay, so now we could put these aside here, and we could take our back case. So this comes pre-assembled. Just want to pull it out of here. So we have our back paddles here. They're already pre-installed. We just need to screw this back on top. So now that our paddles here are attached to this back case, we're going to do the same exact thing to the 050, the black one. Now that we have our paddles installed on both of our back shells, we could start uh, assembling the controllers together. So their back shells are identical the same it's just the insides are different so we're just going to put this in here like this let's put the top first click it into place and same thing with this one so we're going to take our motherboard here Open it up here. Once it's fully in there, and if you like wiggle it, it doesn't come out, then that means it's in there. This is also important part that you want to make sure that the, all of these cables have good connections because if one connection is not good, then you know your back paddles will not work and you're not going to have a good time. Now we're going to take our motherboard, just line it up into these little holes for a perfect fit. And we're going to take our small screws that came with the kit and just screw them on here. Now when you're screwing these screws, make sure that you're using the smaller ones as the kit came with two sizes. So you want the smaller ones for this. All right, board is in. Last part, put this on. And we're going to do the same thing to our fifth generation controller. Make sure our cable is in all the way. Depending on the clickiness of the paddles, you could loosen the board. This is a good one, but this is not. So I need to loosen this board up just a little bit. That's much better. Let's loosen it up just a little bit more. There we go. And we're just gonna put our back case on here. So now let's finish assembling the controller. We're gonna take our screws again that we did, put here and we're just gonna screw it back on. Okay, now let's take the controller and we're just going to test it to see if everything works properly. I'm going to turn it on. Go to gamepad tester. In here we could check out if the paddles are working. So to map the buttons, we have our standard mode and we have our turbo mode. So for the standard mode, mode so let's 
We have the P1, we will push the standard and P1 at the same time. Once that light lights up, then we will map it, let's say, to zero. And then we push the standard again. So now when we push P1, that button lights up. It's mapped to this button. So you could also do a combination. So let's say you want to do aiming and X. A lot of games, you aim with this button. So you put the push, let's push them at the same time. Let's see if that worked. So when we push the P2, we should get two buttons combination. So look at that. So we have two button combination with P2 and P1. We have that. So let's map the turbo P4. Let's do X. Then we push turbo again. So when we push this, as we can see, the turbo is mapped on that. Pretty awesome. Let's try with this one now. Let's do standard. So this is like this. It's not going to work most likely. Something's wrong with this one. See, it's not mapping. So let's... It's probably a cable that's loose or something. Let's see if we could fix this issue. So here I opened the controller up and I could see that this cable here is loose. It must have came out after I put it together. So I think this was the issue. So let's just put this back in here. Okay. And just so we don't have to put it everything together we could actually just give it a test here like this we just need some power so now we could test this board right now before we put it all together so we're going to push the standard this is the standard here and one of the paddles um. So now it's blinking slow. Oops, I put too many buttons there. Okay, let's see if that works. So now I push the back paddle and as you can see the trigger is working. So that's the issue. So if your controller blinks fast, it's most likely one of these ribbon cables that come off. And if your paddles happen to stop working after a month or so, it's probably the main board and all you have to do is contact Thompson and they will send you a replacement for free. So now that I got this controller put back together, let's just test to make sure everything is working properly. So as, as you can see, it's blinking slowly. So everything should be in line and connected. And let's do a double on this one combination. It seems working great. And again, if you guys have any issues and if it's blinking fast, always reach out to Thompson. They will happily replace your parts and help you get this installed. It's fairly easy. The 010020 has an extra step in installing those cables. The 030, 40, and 50. As you can see, even I pulled out those cables and the controller is working flawlessly with four back paddles if you guys have any questions contact me or thompson and i will try to help you guys install it but but as you guys saw in the video it's fairly easy and simple especially this one without that extra step so thanks thank you guys for watching as always i'll see you guys next time